Years ago, the great screen actor Jimmy Cagney was working with a young actress that was about to be fired. Uh, he went to the director and said, let me talk to her. And he walked over to the actress and he said, look, it's simple. You walk in the room, you plant your feet, look me in the eye, and tell the truth. The logo of the X-Files is the truth is out there. The truth is out there. I'm going to paraphrase. The truth is in here. You're about to hear the truth. I'm an actor. My name is John Cipher. For seven years, I walked through the door, planted my feet, and tried to tell the truth as Chief Daniels on Hill Street Blues, as General Craig on the hit sitcom Major Dad. I was two years on Dynasty, you're on Knott's Landing, I've done five afternoon soap operas, 12 Broadway shows, and 20 films. One of the Broadway shows I did was the great musical Man of La Mancha on Broadway. I was Richard Kiley's original understudy. I sang the words to dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go. I'm here to introduce your host this morning, Dr. Stephen Greer. He's a man who is running pell-mell where the brave dare not go. He was an emergency room physician, in fact, the director of emergency medicine at a major hospital in North Carolina. Three years ago, he sat his wife and his four daughters down and said, I've been doing this part-time, running after the truth, for seven years now. Now I'm going to do it full-time. He walked away from all that money to pursue the truth. I always think of Hamlet's great line to Horatio, there are more things between heaven and hell than are dreamed of in your philosophy, Horatio. I'm going to introduce a man who says, there are more things between heaven and hell than any of us have accepted. And I have the witnesses and the documents to prove it. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Stephen Burr. Thank you very much, John. Uh, members of the press, the American public, and people of the world. We are here today to disclose the truth about a subject that has been ridiculed and questioned, denied for at least 50 years. The men and women who are on this stage and the some 350 additional military intelligence witnesses to the so-called UFO matter and extraterrestrial intelligence can prove and will prove that we are not alone. I would like to thank Sarah McClendon, who is with us today, the famed White House correspondent, for her sponsorship of this meeting. Thank you very much, Sarah. In 1993, a group of uh, military advisors to this project and I met out in the countryside in Virginia. And we decided that it was time for civilians, military, intelligence, and other people to come together to disclose the truth about the subject which is called UFOs. Since that time, I have personally briefed a sitting director of Central Intelligence, James Woolsey, President Clinton's first CIA director. I have personally briefed the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, the head of Intelligence Joint Staff, members of the Senate Intelligence Committee, many members of Congress, members of the European leadership, the Japanese cabinet and others. And what I have found is that none of them are surprised that this is true, but they are uniformly horrified that they have not had access to these projects. We can establish through these witnesses whom we have identified, which now number over 400, 
And these are people who have been inside the CIA, NSA, NRO, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Army, all divisions of the intelligence and military community, as well as corporate witnesses, contractors to the government. And these are folks who have been involved in so-called black budget or covert unacknowledged projects. These unacknowledged special access projects are taking in at least 40 to 80 billion dollars per year. And they are sitting on technologies that can change the world forever. The reason we are coming forward now is that we are asking for the U.S. Congress and for President Bush to move towards an official inquiry and disclosure on this subject. It has the most profound implications for the human future, for the U.S. national security, and for world peace. Specifically, technologies connected to UFO and extraterrestrial vehicles, if declassified and used for peaceful energy generation and propulsion, would solve the looming energy crisis definitively, would end global warming, would correct the environmental challenges that the Earth is facing. It is also critical that we begin to debate as a society the propriety of placing weapons in space. If indeed, as we can prove, it is true that we are not alone and that space is territory which we are sharing with other civilizations, it could be a very imprudent, destabilizing thing to place weapons in space. This is not being debated because it is off the national and international radar screens. It needs to be placed on it, and we are here today to do it. We can establish through this testimony that these objects of extraterrestrial origin have been tracked on radar going thousands of miles per hour, stopping and making right-hand turns. That they use anti-gravity propulsion systems, which we have already figured out how they work in classified projects in the United States, Great Britain, and elsewhere. That these objects have landed on terra firma, at times have been disabled, and have been retrieved specifically by teams within the United States that extraterrestrial life forms have been retrieved and their vehicles have been taken and studied thoroughly for at least 50 years. We can prove through the testimony and documents that we will be presenting that this subject has been hidden from members of Congress and at least two administrations that we are aware of presidential administrations, and that the Constitution of the United States has been subverted by the growing power of these classified projects, and that this is a danger to the national security. There is no evidence, I wish to emphasize, that these life forms from elsewhere are hostile towards us, but there is a great deal of evidence that they are concerned with our hostility. There are times when they have neutralized or rendered inert the launch capabilities of intercontinental ballistic missiles. Witnesses here today will describe those events to you. They have shown clearly that they do not want us to weaponize space, and yet we are proceeding down that dangerous path. And it will be established that these projects, because they have not been supervised properly by the Congress, by the U.S. President, by the international community, have become a threat to the national security. And for this reason, we feel we must disclose the facts. This is the beginning of the campaign for disclosure. And in a memo that I wrote to President Bush last week, I stated that this campaign will persist until our goals are met, and they are as follows that we have open, honest hearings on the subject in the U.S. Congress, that there would be a permanent ban on the weaponization of space or the targeting of any objects of extraterrestrial origin.